Dear Jerry, welcome to Writing Rain's Day. It just does not really want to roll off my tongue like that. Rain's Day. Rain's Day. That reminds me of, um, oh God, what does it remind me of? I can, I can, I can feel it. It's, I think it's from the Princess Bride. I can't remember what it's from right now. It'll, it'll come to me, probably right after I finish recording. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was from The Princess Bride. Rain's Day. Of course, it's the impressive clergyman. <laughs> My wedge. That's what it reminds me of. Rain's Day. Um, so yes, writing Rain's Ren, Day. I'm now going to wind up. If I don't pronounce it that way out loud every time I say it, I'm going to hear it in my head that way. <laughs> Dear Dowie, welcome to Writing Wednesday. No, I'm not doing it in that voice. No. Um, <clears throat> as it turns out, reading other people's stuff, not nearly as easy as I thought it was going to be. I grant that I didn't think it was going to be easy anyway. It may take a little bit. The, the two of you that have given me stuff to read, it may take me a little while before I will be, because, I mean, I know that I, some of you have mentioned that, you know, the fumbles and, and flubs and whatnot will be more entertaining, and admittedly, yes, they will, but they'll be entertaining for you. They will be entertaining for me at first, and then they will become incredibly frustrating, because the first one or two flubs that I do, I can laugh at. But if I keep stumbling over it, it gets me more and more frustrated and more and more frustrated. And the more frustrated I get, the more I screw up. And the more I screw up, the more frustrated I get. And it starts this loop that just is not a pretty thing. So it may be a bit before I get to get to these stories. Um, so today I have yet another one of mine. Uh, again, it was another one of the writing exercises that I did, and these are all really, really short. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to use really short things for this uh, this themed day, because it's very, very easy to do them. And it doesn't take long to write them if I happen to decide, I'm going to write something for Ren's Day. Um, this particular one, I can't remember what the... Um, what the, the the focus of the writing exercise was. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny how, you know, um, I think what we wanted to do was have, have something with, with no real dialogue between people. You could have monologue, but you couldn't really have dialogue. But you wanted to establish... I think the purpose of the exercise was try to establish emotion between two people when one of those people isn't there, I think. And I think what it mostly the, the writing exercise had to deal with was dialogue between two people when all you have is one person and it's their interpretation of the person. The other, I, maybe that wasn't it. Maybe it was, you know, write something about a carousel horse. And I went in the complete wrong direction because this doesn't have a carousel horse in it. Um, this, uh, a lot of people, when they have read this, were like, God, what, what was your boyfriend doing when you wrote this? I wasn't in a relationship when this was going on. This isn't based on anything. This is just one of those scenarios that was floating around in the back of my head. Um, it is a very tense sort of, sort of thing. Um, it's about, it's from the perspective, well, never mind. I'll, I'll read it and then I'll tell you more about it towards the end. It's entitled Nobody's Business. There are a few universal truths that many of us come to realize as we move through life. The sky is blue, except when it's not. People love each other, except when they don't. Friends help each other, except when they won't. 
For every law there is a loophole, for every absolute an exception. Love and hate, bitter and sweet, fire and ice, faith and doubt, devotion and abandonment. I'll always be there for you, and I've got some other stuff to do. Slowly the armadillo paced back and forth along the well-worn path in the carpet. He chewed on the stubs of his claw tips and repeatedly glanced at the clock. He played and replayed the impending conversation in his mind, trying to make certain that he'd accounted for every possibility, every gambit, every maneuver, every ploy. He knew his opponent well. He should, after dating him for six years. He'd be home soon. Then it would start. The talk that he didn't want to have. The endless round and round of who did who to what, which, what, when, wherever. Already he felt the muscles of his stomach aching to try and curl up into a little ball, to hide from what he feared. But what was it? Being alone or being with him? Yes, he had a temper, but he was also very loving. Intense. That's what he was. The plates on his back had the scrapes and scratches to prove that, but he'd never really hurt him. It just scared him. A lot. Sometimes. Soon, very soon, he'd hear the car pull into the driveway. He'd hear the car door close. That would be the best indicator, whether the door slammed or simply shut. If it slammed, could he hold his course and go through with this? He reached over to the chessboard and picked up the silver queen, moving it diagonally and holding it over the onyx bishop. He bit his low... No, sorry, screw that one up. <clears throat> his lower lip trembled and he set the shining lady back where she had been. He paced back to the bed, scooped up the remote, and clicked the TV on. In the glowing window of that horrid oracle he saw the face that would soon be contorted in rage or despair, heard the voice that would soon be snarling or sobbing. In the commercial, the, the words uttered with the tender honesty of a used car salesman. Nobody listens. Nobody understands. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to help you. I'm Tabas Nobody, and we run our company the way it should be run, like nobody's business. He clicked the TV off just in time to hear the car door outside slam hard enough to make the shocks creak. He wiped his eyes, stood up straight, and cocked the revolver. Now, when I read this, um, because we had to read it to the group, um, <laughs> I got to that last part, and one of the other guys in the in my writing group at the time was sitting there. He's he's kind of mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I got to the end to that last part, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa!" And I was like, "That's exactly how I felt when I wrote it," because I was typing. He wiped his eyes, stood up straight, and you know, I mean, it it came to me in that moment. You know, cocked the revolver. I was like, "Where the hell did that come from?" Oh. And what's that next moment? I don't know. And I've, that's, last, last time when I read the, the story before, you know, it's like, well, what's the rest of the story? You know, what's, I don't know. You know, this is not likely something I'm ever going to finish. This is exactly what it was meant to be. I'll never add to it. It will never expand beyond this, at least not by my hand. You know, it's, this is what I was supposed to write. But I got to that last line. I was like, oh my God, oh. That is messed up. Oh, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, this was one of the ones that I was I was really, really happy with. And you know, as as kind of horrific as it is, this piece of hair stuck in my eyelashes. Um, as horrific as it is, you know, the the you know clearly what's going on. In this thing, I was, as soon as I finished typing, I was like, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, okay, I'm, I guess some part of me is a little bit twisted, but I, I was really, really proud of this this one, because um, that one completely caught me by surprise, and I think that's, that's a great thing when writing can do that, that it catches even the author by surprise. You you get so into what you're doing that you you've got it written before you really are aware of what it is that you've written. For me, I think that's part of the reason why I have such a hard time with outlines because I start outlining something and I, I list, okay, here's the story I'm going to tell. It's, it does this and then this and then this and then this happens and this happens. And these are the kind of the key frames that I'm going to hit. 
the various outline points. As soon as I start writing the story, it just, I mean, it, it's, it's very much like when you're talking to me in conversation and I just kind of ricochet off on a different subject. It's very much like that. It's just the story says, nope, we're going this way. And I eventually figured out how to describe it. It's much more like I'm transcribing a movie that I'm watching and for the first time. Um, somebody was like, well, how does that even work? And I'm like, okay, have you ever seen Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead? Love that movie, by the way. And they were like, no, I've never seen it. And I said, okay, here's a pencil and paper, and I want you to write the story out for me. And he's like, but I, I've never seen it. I don't, I've never read it. I don't know what the story is. I said, exactly. I said, but just write it out. Write out what you think it's going to be. And he's like, but I, I don't know what the story is. I'm like, I know. Welcome to my freaking world. You know, <laughs> I have this idea of what I think the movie is going to be. And it just, or not the movie, but the story. And it just takes on a life of its own. And the characters tell me, no, we're not doing what you want us to do. That is not the story we're here to tell. This is the story we're here to tell. And so it starts going off in a different direction. And so that's where you know a lot of my friends have been like, well, then you just redo the outline, which I do. And once again, they're like, uh, no, we're not going that way. It's doing this. I'm like, oh. eventually I just got frustrated. I just got fed up with trying to write out outlines. They just, they don't work for me. It's not to say that they're bad outlines. It's just that the stories don't play out like that in my head. It's, I'm literally transcribing a movie, movie, and transcribing a movie, or marriage, I'm transcribing a movie as I'm watching it played out. That is what I'm seeing. Yes, I can go through and I can write, you know, like this story. Um, I can write, you know, it, and then I can go in and go, okay, wait. So what led them to this point? And I can back up. Um, and, you know, start at an earlier point, but I have to write, I don't have to write. I don't want to say that because then that kind of boxes me into believing that I, I function a certain way and it, it's very dynamic. Um, I, I just, I tend to write entire scenes all at one time. And that was one of the big things that, um, one of the, the, the main guys in my, uh, old writing group was, was always trying to teach me. Do not try to write your final draft straight out of the gate. It doesn't work. I mean, yeah, you can finish a story, but it's not a great story. It might be okay. It might even be good, but it will not be great. Write it, put it on the shelf, and don't think about it for like three months, and then go back and re-rate it. And you'll probably be like, oh, no, that doesn't work. That's the kind of, you know, stuff that you need to be aware of, you know, Never shoot for the final draft the first time through. And that's a really hard habit for me to break. Um, because I have always been... That's one of the reasons why it is so difficult for me to practice art. I know that I can draw. I've done it before. Um, my sister is a brilliant artist. She is amazing. She did some of the, the card art for um, uh, the Arkham Horror board game, the Call of Cthulhu Arkham Horror board game. The, the, the secretary, the research assistant, I think, she, you know, that one, the king in yellow. Oh, she, she's done some amazing stuff, absolutely amazing. And I'm quite certain that if I had put the amount of effort and practice into it that she did, I would be just as good as she is, if not close to. Um, but... When I start trying to draw, I have a very clear image in my head. And if that is not what comes out right away, I get very upset and very frustrated and I quit. And I just, I get incredibly just angry and I, I don't go back. I don't go back. I don't try to finish it. I don't practice because I'm trying to do the finished piece right out of the gate. And that doesn't work with art, and it doesn't work with writing. There are some people who can start at one corner of a picture and just and they just print in, you know, this this thing. But they've had years of practice to get to that point. But part of my brain just doesn't want to accept that. 
I should be able to do that, my brain says. No, not really. Not really, no. Anyway, 15 minutes. So there we go. There's your writing Wednesday. To so treasure your Wednesday. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Be careless.